Controlling Millibags. In today's video, you will learn how to identify millibags, their damage symptoms, and how to control them. Millibags are very small, soft bodied insects with piercing and sucking mouth parts. As you can see in the picture here, they tend to be sort of flattened. And of course, they congregate at the tips as we are going to learn. Millibugs have oval shaped bodies that are covered with white, cottony, and waxy secretions, almost like flour. This is um, a protective measure that they have. So, in a sense, sometimes you may confuse slightly with white flies, you know, because they are all white. But white flies have got wings and they fly, uh, of course. But also white flies will fly away. They're like tiny little moths. So often the millibugs do not move much. Millibugs are common at the joint or base of leaves and stems. You find them under the leaves, on twigs, on flowers, on roots, and even fruit. So in any plant pot. Um, if you're looking for them, you actually see them because they get to be there. In this picture, of course, you can see them again congregated around the tips. Like I mentioned, millibags will infest all plant buds. You know, they don't discriminate. In this picture, you can see them around the flower bud, really a lot of them, which means, of course, unfortunately, this flower bud will have to be cut off. They look on stems, on twigs, on flowers on leaves and fruits, on feeder roots and root crowns. So everywhere and everywhere you find millibags. They are also common at the succulent tips. So you can see here, like I mentioned, because those are the soft places that they go for. So if you're looking for them, start with the tips of the plant. Again, they are very common at the base. So often as I move around the landscape, the places that I find them, are usually around this location. So you can see in this picture, there were really a lot around the base of these plants. And again, in the next picture. So you can't miss them really if you're looking. Now, after piercing and sucking the sap from plants, millibugs tend to excrete it on the leaves as a shiny and sticky product called honeydew. We're gonna see in the next picture here. And this is the product that we say ants really love. They love the honeydew and are often present where millibugs are to be found. So on this honeydew, a black fungus normally forms, which is what we call the black sooty mold. So you can see in this picture, this shiny stuff. So millibugs are mostly common at the base of the leaves, on succulent tips and flower beds, but also on the leaves, as you can see, when they pierce and suck the sap, they excrete this sticky honeydew all over the leaves and stem. And this is the stuff which is sugary, that the ants normally like to feed on. So in this picture, you can see hibiscus with honeydew deposits after millibugs were feeding on it. So usually this sugary stuff is so much for the millibugs, it fills up their stomach and they want to excrete it. And this is what happens. So they excrete it. The ants love it. So they come. So often you see ants in the landscape where you find these sucking insects. And so, of course, that's the first indicator that there is a problem. So in this picture, you can see a croton with a sooty mold, which gives the plant a dirty and sooty appearance. Because on top of that, honeydew, a fungus, which we call the black sooty mold, actually forms on it. So usually you find plants which are infested with the millibugs. They normally have this black sooty mold. And unfortunately, the black sooty mold, like we mentioned in previous videos, it reduces the photosynthetic area of the plant and the leaves, so the plant can't make enough food. Now, the plants that are infected by millibugs are many. It's a wide range of ornamental plants such as hibiscus, but they do also go to fruits such as citrus and guavas and bananas and grapevines. They go to plums, mango, sugarcane, and even coffee. So they do infect a lot of plants. And as you can see here, the pink hibiscus millibug, which is very common 
It will even go to coffee and sugar cane and pineapples and guava. So they don't discriminate. They'll even go to breadfruit. You know, so be on the lookout for them because you kind of get to see them. Millibugs on high on crotons in this picture. Crotons are quite actually susceptible to millibugs. So often as I move around the landscape, I will normally either notice millibugs, I will notice scale insects and even white flies. So these are some of the more common plant insects around this particular plant. So, but like I mentioned, they will go to any plants. In this picture, you can see them on red euphorbia, again on the petioles and the junctions of the leaves. You'll also find them on plumeria. And like I mentioned, plumeria is almost like a magnet. It will often attract a lot of different kinds of pests. And in this case, of course, you have the black sooty mold that is an indicator of the millibug presence. Now, the millibug damage, like I mentioned, they feed on the plants. And sometimes the feeding leads to leaves turning yellow or brown and falling off. So the plant parts may be spotted, they may get culled because of all the sucking of the sap, or they'll get wilted. And of course, if they do, as you can see in this picture, often those leaves can also fall off. So severe feeding can lead to stunted growth, like I mentioned, because they're actually sucking the sap from the plant and then eventually the death of the plant. The honeydew and the sooty mold further disfigures the plants, as you can see. Uh, that black stuff that normally congregate around the leaves. So how do you control millibugs? There are several strategies you can take. The first one is to prune off heavily infested branches. Like we mentioned earlier, you want to reduce the amount of millibugs that are in the landscape on all the plants. You follow it up by washing with a blast of uh, water. So you blast off millibug infested branches with a strong water hose. You can also use beneficial insects such as ladybugs, lacewings, parasitic wasps, sulfid flies, or millibug destroyers, and their larval stage, which really love the millibug. So if you can attract these beneficial insects into the landscape, you'll be able to actually take care of them. You can also prune off infested leaves and branches, and this is what we refer to as sanitation, because you want to reduce on the infestation load that these millibugs have on the branches so if you can take away some of the heavily infested branches that reduces the amount of millibugs in the landscape you can wash off or blast off millibug infested branches the strong water hose like i mentioned once a week walk around your landscape and actually will give your plants a bath that's what somebody said you know you wash off the dust you wash off any bugs around them you notice that in more rainy areas you actually have less pests, you know, um, all things equal. You mostly have walked around landscapes and are found in places where it rains more often. You don't have as many bugs, but of course you also get diseases, unfortunately. Now, millibugs, you can also use beneficial insects. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of them that are really great for millibug control, like ladybugs, lacewing, parasitic wasps, millibug destroyer larvae, like what you're seeing in the picture here, sulfid flies. These all take care of the millibugs and they'll always appear in the landscape where there are millibugs. So normally, Millibugs have many natural enemies and the outbursts of any millibugs is frequently occurs when these natural enemies have been disturbed or destroyed by pesticides. So it's very important not to use a lot of the heavy duty pesticides that are going to affect the natural enemies or the beneficial insects. As you can see, there's a large list of beneficial insects that really go for millibugs. You know, that's their diet. You have parasitic co-ops, lady beetles, and their lady beetle larvae. The millibug destroyer larvae, that's a great one for controlling millibugs. And the mother, which is the millibug destroyer. You have the midges, which are tiny flies. You have the green lace wings. You have the minute pirate bugs. So all these bugs, all these good bugs, we call them the soldiers of the garden, they actually come in to try and control it. And then, of course, you have, like I mentioned, anytime you have the imbalance in nature. So if you have a lot of millibugs, then you also get the good guys coming into the place. So you can see a picture of a ladybug. So if you're quite observant in the landscape, you notice that the good beneficial insects actually 
they do come into the landscape and they are present. So be careful not to get rid of them. So you need to grow herbs such as dill and fennel and parsley or rosemary, mint, sage, and similar ones to attract the beneficial insects into the garden. You don't necessarily have to grow all of them, at least two or three of them, just around the plants. Uh, they'll kinda, they provide the nectar and the, and the pollen that the beneficial insects actually want. You can also use insecticide or soaps like we mentioned in the past. You can use horticultural oils or dormant oils. So these are much more sustainable, much more safer alternatives in the landscape. Of course, grow herbs. Like I mentioned, herbs really look great. I mean, look at these chives. They have great flowers. You have lavender, which looks absolutely amazing. The smells are wonderful. You have cilantro, which you can use. So you, of course, you get to use the herbs, but also the herbs provide a habitat for the beneficial insects so that they can hang around in your landscape and take care of the bad insects. You can use insecticidal soaps and oils which are effective against the, the pest. So if you don't want to use these heavy duty pesticides that we mentioned, you make sure that these oils and insecticidal soaps are in contact with the pest. So when you're spraying, make sure you spray properly. You cover the underside of the leaves. You cover the top. It has to be properly covered for the pest to actually be taken care of. Otherwise, uh, most of these are what we call contact insecticides, and therefore they will not work if they don't get in touch with the pest. The other examples of essential oils that you can use, of course, for your insect control, this includes cedar oil, lavender oil, citrus oil. So if you want some of those plant-based oils, you know, things that are made from citronella or lemon or orange, you can always buy. This is an example of a pesticide oil, which is used for organic gardening. And of course, you have peppermint and eucalyptus oils. There are all kinds of plant-based oils and other alternatives for controlling pests. You also need to control ants because mealybugs, like I mentioned, normally you have uh, control ants which feed on the honeydew that the mealybugs, of course, excrete. And the ants protect the mealybugs from their natural enemies, so beneficial insects such as lady beetles and others. So you find the ants fighting off, as you can see in this picture, the ants actually are fighting off, they'll fight off the bad uh, the good guys, the beneficial insects like ladybugs, but they are also hanging around the bad insects. In this case, you can see aphids and ants hanging around. The ants are hanging around the aphids because the aphids will excrete the honeydew that the ants need and want. So the two go together. So you have ants, you have the bad bugs, you have mealybugs or aphids. So you need to use baits, let's say baits with boric acid, which will take care of the ants. You can use other products like arm draw or sprays, or even a product like tango food, which is a sticky product that you wrap around your um, shrubs and it takes care of trying to prevent the ants from coming up. Now, if you uh, you can also remove mealybugs using a cotton swab dipped in alcohol. If you have indoor plants or small manageable areas, you can actually, if you have the time and the inclination and the energy, you can take a, a tip, a cotton swab tip dipped in alcohol and just kind of swap it. It's a labor intensive process. So of course, again, it's a balance of time and commitment. You need to also scout or monitor your crop because management of heavy mealybug infestation is very difficult. So if you are scouting or monitoring your crop, you'll be able to identify the pests before they multiply and get out of hand. So this is your early warning system that will enable you to know what, what's there in the landscape. And if you're able to monitor it, you'll be able to actually get rid of them when they are fewer. Mealybugs, of course, easily develop resistance to pesticides. So you don't want to use you know, continuously use pesticides in the landscape because eventually they'll stop being effective because the mealybugs will have developed resistance. In this picture, you can see mealybugs on Suriname cherries, and these are on the fruit. But if you have done monitoring and surveying the garden, they would never get to this point where they're really congregated around the leaves, on the branches, and even on your fruits, the fruits you want to eat. So make sure you get to them before they get to that stage. So to summarize on you, how to control mealybugs, we said one, prune off infested branches. Two, make sure you're having sanitation in the garden, cleaning off and getting rid of any infested branches. Then three, you can use a high pressure water stream that washes off the bugs. 
Four, you can use insecticide or deep soaps or oils. Five, you can use systemic insecticides if you're dealing with ornamental plants. And these are slightly safer. I mean, they don't last too long. Um, or rather, they do get into the root system through the branches and up into the areas that the insects are coming into. So again, that's an alternative you may consider. And then, of course, there's neem oil, which you always say it's one of the safer alternatives in the landscape. You need to manage your ants, like we mentioned, the role that the ants plays in the soft insects in the landscape. And then, of course, lastly, use the biological control, you know, being able to invite the beneficial insects into your, your landscape so that they take care of the bad insects. So we'll see you in the next video.